and with the big throttle body it jumped to 357 foot-pounds now that's substantial and that has to do with how much air we get early because a bigger diameter throttle body is going to give you more air early <laughs> Morning, everyone. Uh, we're back on our Scat Pack uh, testing series. Um, the last time we were on the dyno, we had tested the air raid cold air intake. I looked at the other air intake we had here, and I didn't feel that it was going to be advantageous to even bother with it because this is a superior air intake. Um, looking at all the individual components, the air box, uh, the tube, I was really really impressed with this air raid system you know it again it wasn't uh i think we ended up with somewhere between five and six horsepower it wasn't you know earth shattering um in the data logs i had mentioned that i was seeing the kpa drop in the intake manifold or it was starting to generate vacuum and uh felt that the throttle body was going to be our next best move so we uh, purchased an adapter plate and a uh, Hellcat throttle body, and then we port matched the first uh, one inch of this air intake manifold to blend it into the uh, the spacer. And Nick has pictures of that that he took yesterday when we were doing that. Um, put it on the dyno, and to my surprise, there's almost no gain. Um, you know, if, if you if you wanted to pick out anywhere that it actually did gain is actually going to be below 3,500, which is contrary to what the data log was telling me. The data log was telling me that look, the thing's starting to make vacuum up top, so there's got to be some room for some additional airflow there. And in the data logs with the big throttle body, the KPA stays flat now, but there's no difference in power. So the restriction may still be in the manifolds and the exhaust system. So I think that the throttle body is going to be advantageous once we get more airflow through the engine via the exhaust. So what I might do is if we can go back to the stock throttle body, we did quite a bit of porting to make that line up. Uh, if there's a way to get the stock throttle body to seal back on there, maybe I'll, when the headers are on it, I'll uh, put the stock throttle body back on it and see how that hurts it. Um, there is a gain, a uh, pretty substantial torque gain down low. So if we pick this point here, and I've got to make sure I'm on torque. I am on torque. Uh, I was 321 foot-pounds at 2450, and with the big throttle body, it jumped to 357 foot-pounds. Now that's substantial, and that has to do with how much air we get early because a bigger diameter throttle body is going to give you more air early and in a lot of cases the most noticeable change from the driver's point standpoint when you put a bigger throttle body on or a ported throttle body is throttle response and there's the evidence right there um, it made almost identical power at the top you know there was there was some back and forth through the middle of the torque band so we see gains all the way up to about 3,650 RPM. Um, that's, and then it swaps back and forth. And we're only talking about one or two foot pounds. So it's almost on top of each other, all right? And then the same thing at the peak power, 444, 446, there's, you know, it, if we want it, if we wanted to call it anything I can only call it two horsepower moving from the stock throttle body to the Hellcat throttle body with the air raid already installed okay so we're we're doing a process of elimination let's see where the restrictions are I think that you know that the inside diameter of the manifold is 
still small in here in through this section um, there was a lip in there we blended that made it a little smoother so probably went in about four inches total maybe maybe three and a half inches you can't really get in there and start hogging it up because it's plastic and then you'll break through so there's no room to really port it um, so we're bouncing around some ideas our next step is going to be to put the long tube headers on with the high flow cats and uh, an X pipe and we're going to run it again so I think that uh, that's where we're going to see the power but I've been wrong before you know I really thought that the throttle body was going to going to make a difference based on the data logs and the fact that it was pulling vacuum anytime you know in the past for years now anytime we've seen an engine pulling vacuum and we go to a bigger carburetor or whatever the case may be um, they typically pick up power because you're you're each cylinder is able to grab a little bit more air because it's closer to atmospheric pressure so um, any questions or comments please post them down below uh, we'll be happy to answer them we're going to continue this series we have the long tube headers here we're going to be putting them on uh, hopefully this week and uh, we'll, we'll get the content out to you we'll dyno test it again um, so the throttle body definitely makes a difference below 3600 rpm above 3600 rpm it, it swapped back and forth back and forth so i can call that a wash there's nothing there like i said maybe two horsepower but nothing you're ever going to feel you're going to feel that throttle down low though the throttle response is going to be massive i mean that's that's big we went from like i said it was 321 foot pounds to 357 Oh, it's uh, that's 30, 36 foot pounds. Pretty substantial. That's a big game, yeah. Yeah, so you're gonna feel that, and it's you know, so in a normal day to day driving, the throttle body is gonna make you feel like it's got a lot. You have access to more power, so it's 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 gonna be a nice drivability improvement. But peak horsepower, I can't I can't even call it a gain. I, I think it's a wash. It's there's nothing there, so. Well, stay tuned, and uh, more to come. Thanks, guys. This is a base um, channel list that I've used before, and I'm going to go in now, and I'm going to select a bunch of other channels so I keep an eye on everything and configure this data logger for, for this car because every car is different, it seems like. There's some standard stuff that crosses over from car to car, but... This one here is going to need a specific setup. So I'm make sure everything's working, and then I'm going to start adding channels. Okay. Uh, so you're, you're data logging all of this information so you can get the baseline. Yeah. I want to know. Store. I want to know what's going on in the baseline so I can. Determine where there's room for improvement. 